Well, guys, it may have taken over three and a half years, but we have finally hit the magical number of 10,000 sold items on eBay. When I think back over the three and a half years, there has been so many lessons that I have picked up along the way, and I thought that we've just pen it into a video today to teach you guys what I wish I knew sooner to hopefully help you with your own eBay journey as well. Um, we've got 10 sales that have come through over the last 24 hours. I need to put them into a mailbag today, so I figured I'd just basically go through some sales and go through some lessons and hopefully... That's a really entertaining video for you guys to tune into. So it should be a fun one. Let's do it. So I believe that everyone needs to have three personal characteristics, three traits to be a successful eBay seller, and that is discipline, consistency, and patience. If you're lacking any of those, you're going to have a hard time because success on eBay takes a really, really long time. If I think back to when I first started in 2020, uh, for just that first six months, we did about 400 sales. And then if I look at last year's numbers, we were very, very close to hitting 4,000 sales. I think it was about 3,960. Um, so that, that growth of three and a half years to go from 400 to 4,000, it took three and a half years to do that. And I, I, I get too many messages from people all too often saying that, hey, Matt, I've just listed up my first couple of items. I'm not getting too many page views. I haven't had a sale come through just yet. And I kind of chuckle at the, at the message. It does come through so often. And, and it's just that lack of patience. You've really got to think about when you first start out on eBay as basically signing a lease to your very first, I guess, storefront. And what you're trying to do, even though it is e-commerce and you're not seeing the customers, you are trying to fill the shelves. You're just in your shop filling your shelves in that first three to six months. You're focusing on listings going in, uh, not so much on the sales that are coming in. And every sale that does come in, um, you know, take that as a bonus. I wouldn't be trying to focus on the sales side of things. I'd be trying to focus on building the store with fantastic items. The sales will take care of themselves. But granted, when I first started, if I think back to 2020, when I made those first 400, I was always scratching, oh, where's the next sale coming? It's just natural human instinct. Um, to want to get the result quicker. So I do understand that. It was a lesson that I personally went through. Um, so that's a big one, guys. Personal traits, personal characteristics, knowing yourself, knowing that if you're going to go into something and work for yourself and try and make your own dollar, you're going to have to work damn hard for it. Did you guys notice this? Video games on this bookshelf. Courtney and I have made some movement around the office and all of our video games are now stacked up here. It's just going to allow for some more space because we were quite confined within our little bookshelf over there. So um, that's been one little change over the last couple of days. Um, we had a sale in the video game category too because um, they are selling well. Ark, I think it's called. Yeah, literally Ark, Survivor Evolved. Um, $16.90 was the sale and it was a, a coupon. I'm putting a 5% coupon on every single item across the store for the entire year. Um, I think it's just a really good sales incentive um, for people to feel like they're getting a discount. It takes the legwork out of me having to send off offers, even though my offers are on for every item as well. Um, but it, gen it gen generates some good sales. Um, we're going to put this one into this here, which is a medium tracked envelope. Very, very simple, guys. Um, $5 on that turned into an $11 sale. Uh, take off your fees and posts of about two or three bucks. You're looking at about $8. Um, so, you know, you've got, to be, you've got to be really aware of that too, right? 16, you're actually only making an $8 sale after fees and post. So I think I bought it for a couple of bucks. So we're talking like $4 in profit. It's why we culled a lot of the, you know, $10 to $15 items in the store in November, December last year. And now we're kind of playing around with what's left over. We didn't actually cull the video games just because the sell-through rate is really, really strong. Um, but we might look to do that based on literally what I've just told you then. Like, why would you want to work? for a $4 profit on a single video game. Let's play $20 and up. Might be the way to go about video games moving forward. So these, these are lessons. I started out with about 40 when I first did my brainstorm and then I've, I've basically brought them into my top 10. So I think every single one of these are absolute zingers. And this one, this one's a good one. Just because it's cheap, guys, does not mean that you should buy it. You should focus on sell-through rate. Um, board shorts for $4. I vividly remember going into thrift stores and seeing $4 tags on board shorts that I just knew were $50, $60 brand new items. And I just thought that's guaranteed profit. I wasn't even thinking about how long it would take to sell. I didn't even know how to find out that information. But then over the years, I started to realize that sell-through rate is actually the thing. You want to actually almost forego buying bulk quantities of stock and actually focus on just really being strategic 
strategic about the great items that you want to be buying because you know they're going to turn over fast. You've obviously got to buy it at the right price to be able to make a significant enough profit to go ahead with it. But if you know it's going to turn over quicker, you can actually sacrifice a little bit on profit margin uh, because you know you're going to get that initial investment back. So uh, I remember the first time I bought something for $50 because I was so used to buying everything for like one to five, maybe $10 for a pair of shoes at most. But then one day I bought something for $50 and I thought I was breaking all the rules. I thought that I was doing something completely rogue. Um, but that item went on to sell really fast for $150 and I pocketed significant profit off it and I also got that $50 back. Um, and it was because there wasn't that many listings of the item on eBay for sale, but there were so many sales of this product as well. So if you're cross-referencing those two things, how many items are listed versus how many items are sold, you're going to have much more success with eBay. So focus on sell-through rate. Just because it's cheap, don't buy it. Hercules. Where is, there we go. Hercules. So, this was a really good sale, guys. We did, a, two weeks ago now, a private buy on the channel. Um, we bought a stack of video games, and we also bought a stack of these, uh, which were collectible action figures. Um, there's a bunch of Buffy action figures there. Uh, we've got a lot of Battlestar Galactica. These are mini busts, and uh, they're all actually limited edition. You know, Bowen Designs, number 877 of 1000. And they're all actually selling for really good money. All of these action figures, um, we bought them all for $300. And this one, you know, selling for $55 puts us off to a very, very good start. Um, so it was an awesome private pick. If you haven't seen the video, definitely go and check it out. Um, I'm actually not going to be using any bubble wrap to put this one away in the post today. I'm just going to use a box, something like this. Uh, and I'll just probably just cut it down to size. Uh, and that one should be safe and ready to go off to the buyer. But limited edition action figures. Action figures are a very, very good one to be selling. Uh, this was a cool sale to see. Now, I would arguably say that this next one has allowed me to get to 10,000 sold items on eBay. It's been that important, and that is tracking your progress. Now, ever since I really first started, I've always had a whiteboard that has broken down my yearly goal into months and days. And I know what I need to do on a particular day to achieve that end of year. And that really motivates me when I see progress. When you can see progress in achieving something, a human being is naturally more motivated to keep persisting with it. And that comes back to our patience that we need as sellers. So this is a really good tool to kind of hack motivation. Um, and I've got this whiteboard that's been set up here for a very, very long time. And I still literally look at it and amend it every single 24 hours. And I know that by ticking the box of, oh, we achieved what we needed to today, we're gonna to get closer to that yearly goal that we've got set for ourselves. So flying blind on eBay is one of the biggest ways to lose motivation as a seller. Um, and if you're not sure how to create yourself a listing goal, uh, sorry, a financial goal, create a listing goal. Um, so you really wanna kinda of say to yourself, let's try and build out this store. We've got this lease. We're trying to build out the storefront that we spoke of before. Let's try and have 500 items in the store by the end of the year. That might be 10 listings or 15 listings that we need to do every single week. And that might mean that we need to list up two items into our store every single day. So that could be your goal. You could create that on your whiteboard and then just write twos for the entirety of the year until you see a store size of 500. Um, it's just so, so important because it comes back to that motivation. When you see progress, you're more motivated to continue. All right, another sale that came through for a good 50 odd dollars was a book bundle. Or just a book here. Vince Flynn, really, really good author, guys. And this one is actually brand new, um, brand new sealed, the Vince Flynn Collection. Sold this author a number of times before, uh, and we ended up getting a sale price of $47. It was listed for $50. Uh, we got a $47 sale price. So our books uh, is actually all of these tubs along here. So we've got five tubs in our allocation of shelves uh, for the book category. So it is a good one. Um, I, th I do still think that we're going to uh, persist with buying more books, but we're actually going to try and buy them more like this, uh, where they are in their bundles, their sets of books. Um, they seem to do the best rather than individual books, and they obviously sell for a little bit more money too. Um, something like this, we're going to put into a box as well. I may need to go out to Bunnings because I think that box from the looks of it might be yeah, way too big. So I'm going to go out to Bunnings and buy some more boxes to fit these sorts of items, but um, awesome sale, definitely something to look out for. Now, there was a big lesson that I learned around inventory and stock take. 
every single business out there is going to be doing a stock take at least once a year, and that includes eBay sellers. It doesn't matter how many items you've got. I think it's a really important task to make sure that you're going through your inventory, uh, checking it over on eBay, because eBay actually goes ahead, little did I realize, uh, and they clean out any untouched uh, stock. If it hasn't been looked at, if it's been rolled over on 30-day turnovers without any pricing changes or anything like that, uh, no manipulating, then they will go ahead and just wipe it um, from your inventory. It would have been nice at any point in time if they'd let uh, sellers know that. Um, but when I back, went back through in November and started to look through all this stock with Courtney, um, we realized that there were, there were a lot of things that needed to be done. The first one was we just simply needed to drop the price on a lot of our items to get them sold to become more attractive. Um, we also needed to delete really low-hanging cheap items out of our store. Uh, we decided that we didn't want to list up cheap DVDs anymore for that $10 price point. Um, so anything that was sort of mm, sort of $12 to $13 odd dollars would ultimately be deleted. And I think we had about 2,500 items in our store that was culled down to 1,800 items uh, over the span of doing this um, stock tape for about November and December. It took about two months to do. Um, and then the third element of this stock take was we actually had this whole bunch of new inventory um, to list up. We had all this stock that eBay had cleaned out for us that we thought was still for sale, that we had a second opportunity uh, to relist with better titles, better item specifics, better photos, and a better, more attractive price. And funnily enough, a lot of those listings that we did with this new present day knowledge of how to list up an item uh, allowed it to go on to sell for some great money. And um, it was all through doing this stock take. It just cleaned the whole store up it made more things more attractive for buyers and, uh, and it gave us a new lease on life with a smaller store and better quality inventory. So we're going to do it every six months. Uh, we're going to make sure we do it twice a year. Obviously, 1,800 items in store now. It's not going to be as much of a daunting task, um, but we're going to be doing those little steps along the way in the stock take each and every time. And I think it's going to have a huge important result on the success of the store this year. All right, a big PlayStation 2 game sale. Harry Potter... And the Philosopher's Stone, this one has sold for $99.95. So a big, big game, guys. Huge bowler game for you guys to be looking out for. It is complete with its manual, which is exciting. The disc is in excellent condition. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it into one of these bad boys, the medium tracked envelope. There's two of them to go out now. That's a big game, guys. PlayStation 2, Black Label 2. How good. And to be fair, that actually brings me to my next lesson, um, which is ultimately... Niching down, um, niching into certain categories that you know are doing really well. We've just seen so much success with the video game categories that we've said to ourselves, why are we bothering to focus on too many other categories that aren't doing very well? Let's just get out of that, reinvest our money back into the categories that do well. When you first start out like I did, I think being an everything seller is fantastic. I think it's a good place to start uh, because you can actually see in real time what is coming back in sales for you. And then from there, if you've got opportunities to continually source that category, I think that's your indicator to go, right, that's where I'm going to place my focus. So uh, for me, right back in the very beginning, the first product that I ever saw do really well is DVDs. If you guys have watched this channel for any length of time, you'll know how much I've honed in on the DVDs um, from initially dabbling to going full throttle and having DVDs be ultimately 50% of the sales um, that we're getting in store last year. It was really quite significant um, over the last sort of 18 months in that category. And I'm now seeing video games as being that second category that I really would like to see kind of, you know, 40% DVDs, 40% video games, and then 20% everything else, mainly probably shoes. Uh, which has stuck around as a category for me. But it, this is all through trial and experimentation um, right from the very beginning when I had no idea and I just paid attention to the numbers, saw what was doing well. And ultimately, it means that the whole process of eBay for me now is a whole lot more efficient because I know what to buy it for. I know how to title, photo, and, and item specific, um, these, these categories. And I also know how to ship them off as well. And when you're buying big, large, bulky items here and then small, breakable items here, the whole process to get a system in place becomes very time-consuming. Um, but when you're just so familiar with a certain category, it just means that everything gets faster. And speed in this game is equally as good as a great return, as we know of, as we spoke of sell-through rate uh, earlier in this video. So niche down over time. I reckon three to five categories is perfect, uh, but you might be starting out as an everything seller if you're in your beginning stages, and that's okay too. Now, this actually used to be where the video games were housed, but we've actually moved our box sets. Um, so all of our DVD box set TV show seasons are all housed now here. And that actually makes a little bit more sense because we've got all of our individual and, and other box set DVDs uh, on the tower there as well in that bookcase. So 
In our DVD box sets, we did have a sale that just came through then, which was this one right here. Um, Family Guy. We've got the trilogy of Family Guy. So it's a good one, this one. I have sold it a few times before, $25.50. Now, given the size of this, I should be able to go ahead and I reckon we'll just whack some bubble wrap and we'll put it into a small satchel. That should get the job done. I do. I am going to be... These are some Ariat shoes, guys. They're going to be actually doing as a giveaway. Um, I'm going to be drawing that on Sunday when I go to the flea market. So if anyone's wondering about that, that was from a few videos ago. Um, just saw that then. Um, yeah, bubble wrap. Going to do that. Put that into a small satchel. That one, my friends, will be a good one to go. Now, the power of social media, guys. This is something that I absolutely really want to talk to you guys about because it has been such an instrumental benefit for me to hit 10,000 sales. Over the journey, I made my first ever video three and a half years ago before I'd almost ever sold an item on eBay. I just wanted to get started on YouTube and document my journey as a beginner seller. Um, so when I started to make a few sales, I'd, I'd bring out the standard what sold video and just show you my sales. Uh, and then I'd do financial reviews and go through the monthly numbers. It was just a true documentation each and every week. And then after about five or six months on YouTube, making these videos, trying to help as best I could, I got monetized. And I made a dollar and 28 cents making a few um, videos through AdSense, um, which is a large uh, part of how you get paid on YouTube. Um, then you get brand deals every now and again that pays you a little bit more money. In effect, what's happening here is you're, you're actually being paid to advertise. You're not paying to advertise. You're being paid Google AdSense to get exposure on your channel um, to advertise what you do as an eBay seller. So uh, through that advertisement, I've been able to sell items that people see me purchase in videos. I sell them to people on Instagram. And I'm also getting purchase opportunities to benefit my eBay business through private pick videos that you watch. Um, these people are only getting to know who I am through watching me on YouTube and then hitting me up saying, hey, I've got a bunch of stuff, I'm moving into state, I'm having a baby, whatever the case may be, uh, and I'm actually benefiting from just people now knowing who I am. I have no idea who these people are before they reach out to me, but they've been watching me for a couple of years, the trust has been built, and they're happy for me to come out to their home. Uh, they know what I'm about, they know what I'm up to, and they know that I'm a decent person through the YouTube videos that I'm making. So, you know, just wild. Um, and, and, you know, 25,000 subscribers was actually ticked over the day that 10,000 items uh, was achieved as well. It was a really crazy day where both big milestones came through. Um, and it's no coincidence that that's the way that it happened too, because 10,000 sales would not have happened uh, if I didn't have that large YouTube audience. Well, another very, very good result here, guys. Indiana Jones, the bust. Indiana Jones, this one here coming through. Uh, we got $135. Just turn him over. Oh, there we go. This one is number 526 out of 1,000. Um, so there it is there. Crow, I don't even know what that is. I don't even know anything about this, guys, but the comps were telling me it was good. There it is. Croft Minister Exclusive. Gentle Giant, Indiana Jones, collectible minibus. 135 bucks. I'm going to go to Bunnings and put that one into a box as well. Uh, this private pick video that we did the other day has come through with some fantastic results already. My next lesson is around not needing death piles. A lot of, a lot of stuff being spoken about on social media around do you need a death pile or is it right to have a death pile or not? My personal stance around death piles is that I have personally just, I've just never had one. I've always withdrawn, like even the private pick there, what I was showing you, we've just gone through the listing over the last two weeks and I've not bought anything else in that two weeks because we've just had stock to list. And now that we're drawing down towards not having too many left, I'm going to go out to the flea market on Sunday like I always do uh, and I'm going to top back up on more stuff because we're able to go through and list up everything. So, you know, when it comes to death piles for me, as long as that, 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 that in the corner that I was showing you before, those games, that's not a death pile because that is in the process of being listed. That is in the production line. We're just getting through it as quick as we possibly can. And I'm putting a freeze on buying new inventory until that's done. That to me allows that to not be classed as a death pile. But if you've got stock that you have no idea when you're going to get to it, you have no idea what even stock it is anymore because it's been sitting around for so long, um, that is a huge detriment to your eBay business, in my opinion. It is clowning up space and clutter in your, in your house. It's just a, such a horrible way to go about selling in my opinion, because you really want to be focusing on sell-through rate, buying potentially less stock, uh, and just having it leave the house as much as or as quickly as it comes into the house. Um, there are millions of items in the world. You're never going to be stuck without items. It is never going to be a deal where you're not going to get that deal again. There's always going to be good deals. And it's just 
it's that laziness aspect of going, I'm only going to do the fun stuff in the eBay side of things. I'm just going to go out and do what I enjoy. And I don't enjoy listing. I hate the shipping process, but I love going out and buying. So I'm just going to justify that to myself that I'm going to collect all this item and just sit it in the corner and just go out and buy some more stuff because I can't miss out on a good deal. I've just never, ever, ever operated like that. I have always thought I need this because it's my full-time job. I need the money more than anything. And the only way that I get the money is if the item's listed and available for purchase. So that has been my, my mentality or my drive for never having a death pile. I get the, sick at the thought of seeing these items in the, in the corner here unlisted because that is, that is ultimately six or $700 worth of items um, that nobody can actually buy and I can't actually receive that money back. And I do this full time. YouTube, eBay, this is all I do. This is how I make my money. It's how I pay my bills. Um, so why would I want to have stuff in the house that isn't available for purchase if I previously bought it with the intention to do so? I think you get really clouded with, um, with just stress if you've got too much stuff around the house. And I think doing that cull last November, December, um, it's just such a healthy therapeutic thing to do to just see so much of it go and to know that whatever's now here in this room is stock that's actually going to go on to sell and make me some pretty significant good amount of profit well except for that except for that video game um so yeah death piles i just don't think you need them another dvd box set that we've had sell is sons of anarchy season one to four on blu-ray we need to buy more blu-rays because i think blu-rays still do as well as dvds um, but these ones ended up coming through for an 18 dollars sale price It'll go into a small satchel, that'll cost us $8.50. So again, just like that video game, it was one that was right on the cusp of being culled. Um, just because there's not a ton of profit left in it, it means it's a $9.50 sale price. You know, so that's not making you a lot of money and it's not something you ultimately want to have. But good to see it go. DVDs, they are a good fast sell-through rate item. You want to be playing more like this. You know, $25 is probably the minimum. $18, it's cutting into your profits pretty heavily. Now... I'm not a collector of anything. Um, if I think back to the last time I was, it was when I was a kid collecting the 1996 uh, Pokemon card, first edition base set sort of things, and, and the, AFL, the AFL trading cards, I used to collect those as well. Um, but from like 15 years of age onwards, I was never a collector of anything. Um, but over time as an eBay seller, I've realized that eBay is the number one marketplace for collectibles. So it'd be a really good thing in your best interest to focus on collectible sort of products. Um, so I lent into the Pokemon cards because that was something that I had prior experience in. Uh, and I realized that obviously that Pokemon is a, a fantastic category to sell. But um, even things like what you've just seen in this video, like Indiana Jones, like number 526 out of 1,000 limited edition, the, the understanding of the collector's market allows me now as a seller to go, look, while I'm not a, a collector of anything myself, I know that somebody out there is going to absolutely want that. Um, so it really does kind of over the years um, fluctuate in, in what you look for and what you want to buy to source to sell. Um, play to the marketplace that you're trying to sell in. If it's a collector's marketplace like eBay is, then they are the sorts of items that you should be trying to do. And um, the more that I've done that over the years is the more success that I've actually seen um, because I'm getting a little bit more smarter about what I buy. I always love it when this happens, when you get a multi-quantity order. And that is the case here with this one here. So we've got Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. And then we've also got this Resistance Retribution uh, on the PlayStation Portal. Uh, I love PlayStation Portal games. Uh, both of these coming in that big buyout uh, that we did two weeks ago. So a lot of these items that I was able to pick up a few weeks back really starting to generate some really quick sales. Um, the categories are doing well for us. Uh, collectively, we got $29. Um, for these and we'll actually go ahead and put them into a small satchel with some bubble wrap I think um, I could also put them into a large um, tracked envelope as well I'm just out of large tracked envelopes so for the sake of what an extra two odd dollars uh, I think some bubble wrap into a small satchel will be enough um, but yeah video games we're seeing a whole lot more of them now and hopefully there's going to be a bunch more throughout the year which brings us to our next one, which is actually reviewing the performance of your store on a quarterly basis, I think, at minimum, uh, maybe even monthly. Personally, I do it on a monthly basis. We're looking to try and hit monthly goals to try and hit our overall annual 
uh, revenue figure that we've got set for ourselves. Um, but I really do think reviewing the performance and seeing the percentage fluctuations in the categories that you're trying to sell. We spoke of categories and niching down earlier in the video. Um, but perfect examples of this is we doubled down on DVDs when we saw the spike in percentage of eBay sales. You can go into sales, um, you can go into your search history of sales history and see uh, your best performing categories. And that right there is a perfect indication of what you should be trying to hyper focus on. Um, so doing that is really, really important to just reflect on it every single month to see what comes through. Uh, on the other end, we've, we've looked at it and we've seen like things like Funko Pops. I used to buy crazy amounts of Funko Pops, but then I realized that the market has really slid on those and we're not actually getting as many sales as we used to. The percentages for Funko Pops um, were really quite quite small and they were falling away. So we went in and we went into Funko Pops and we just crazily dropped the prices in that category to almost wipe ourselves out of having any. I think we've got about two tubs left. Um, but that was because we were reviewing the performance. And if you don't do that, it's a bit like the stock take. Um, you start to get a bit out of whack with the market. DVDs could plummet one day and if we're not reviewing the performance and seeing on a monthly basis the DVDs and the red arrow down and the percentage getting smaller and smaller, um, yeah, we won't clue into the fact that we should probably stop sourcing that category. Um, so as much as it is great to go out and buy the new stuff, you do need to do a lot of reflection and management of your existing store. That's the biggest thing I've learned in the last 12 months. You want to be doing almost 50-50. 50% 50 -50. 50 of your time out there trying to buy the new, but also 50% of maintaining and nurturing what you've currently got. This was the other one, The Undertaker. WWE action figures have always sold well for me over the last 12 months. And uh, you do see them uh, quite a bit actually at the flea market. That's where I see a lot of these sorts of things and I'll always buy them for a couple of dollars each. Um, we got $22, 22 bucks on The Undertaker, uh, the flipping face Undertaker. Uh, we'll go ahead and put that into a satchel. Uh, we'll do a bunch of bubble wrap, we'll put it into a satchel and that one will be off for, again, another $8.50. So it brings it down to a $14 sale. Um, we bought it for, I think, a couple of dollars. So two odd dollars into $14. It's not the best sale in the world. And remember, that's coming off a $22 sale price. So it's crazy how much sales get fluctuated by fees, postage, and cost of goods. So that's 10 lessons that I have learned over three and a half years of selling full-time on eBay. But there is a really important 11th lesson, and it's this video right here how to list items on eBay to actually get them to go on to sell. And before you know it, you'll hit 10,000 sales too.